All right, guys, so this was a question that was kind of uh, inspired by a question that someone had sent to me uh, asking to kind of solve it. So, you know, we changed some things around. Uh, and so here, here it goes. It says, which of the following is the best estimate of the chance a donor who tests positive is actually infected? Now, right away, you're thinking, okay, I, I understand this, right? Because they're saying someone who tests positive is actually infected positive for the test or the disease and stuff like that. And so you can tell they're asking for positive predictive value. Now, the question reads fully, says, to prevent spread <clears throat> of a highly contagious virus, temperature screening is performed at the entrance of the school setting. The screening process has a sensitivity of 95% and a specificity of 80% and is used on, on a sample of students, which 20% are known to be actively infected. Which of the following is the best uh, estimate of the chance that a donor, uh, and I should say donor, I want to say a chance that a, uh, a student, okay, who tests positive is actually in, infected. So <clears throat> it's like this. Whenever you see a question that has positive predictive value, sensitivity, specificity, anything like that, you got to go back to the box, okay? Now, the key is, for this question is it's missing a piece and this is why I can't stress enough you know it's all about the more questions that you do the more comfortable you'll you'll be doing biostats because I, I really feel strongly that biostats should not be a weak area on your step exams it better be one of your strengths so let's just take a step back and know what do we know about the box right anytime we see that stuff you better go back and say I draw a box and on the top goes what reality on the side goes the test. You better be saying positive, negative, positive, negative. <clears throat> and what that means is that in reality, whether it's somebody that actually has a disease or, or whatnot, that this column represents everybody that actually has the disease. Everybody that in this one and this one equals everybody that has it. And then in reality, this column is going to represent everybody that doesn't have it. And then over here, we can say this is the test. So everybody in this row tested positive. Everybody in this row tested negative. So we know that if we can figure out <clears throat> all the numbers, if we can get a number for each one of these boxes, we can solve sensitivity, we can solve specificity, we can solve positive predictive value, and we can solve negative predictive value. Very easy, right? Now, <clears throat> we can assign letters in here for right now because we don't have any numbers uh, yet. Again, I'm just saying this is just something in general that you have to know outside of this question. You've got to know how to do this box. Now, sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value. Okay? Sensitivity. We circled top left going down, so that would be A over A plus C. Specificity, bottom right, going up. So it would have been D over D plus B. Positive predictive value. You know, and someone's positive, well, the chance of it actually being a positive test, which is what they're asking here. It's A, <clears throat> right, top left going to the right. So it's A over A plus B. And then negative predictive value, someone who tests negative, what is the chances that they were actually negative for the disease? Bottom right, going to the left. Now that's all just basic bio stats. It's on all the videos that I've done previously, but you gotta know that. Now, the other missing piece is, at some point they gotta tell us, perhaps, how many people are in the study, right? Because if I know that, I can, I can start figuring out because they're gonna give you sensitivity, specificity, or something like that, and you work backwards. And that's what they did in this problem. But, so just step back. You got to know this. If you don't know this, you know, this question is going to just beat you up every time. Okay. But the purpose of this question, why I like it so much is that it forces you to do what? It forces you to create a number because they didn't give it to us, right? <clears throat> they gave us sensitivity. They gave us specificity. And they gave us a percentage of people who are known to be actively infected. But did they give us an actual N? No. So this is where you got to be comfortable putting in an N. Now, you can easily do 100. You can easily do 1,000. It doesn't matter. It's whatever your comfort level is. But what I'd recommend is if you want to stay away from decimal points, go with 1,000. So stick that in your back pocket saying if, I, if I'm ever forced and I don't know what the number of this people in the study was, 
I'm gonna choose a thousand because in, in theory it doesn't matter, okay? And you'll find out in a second. So back to this problem. So now I'm like, okay, now this aside, let's work this problem. We know that they're asking for positive predictive value because they said, which of the following is the best estimate of a chance that a donor, um, I'm sorry, a donor, a student <clears throat> who tests positive is actually infected? Positive predictive value. So when I get this on a test, I immediately, you know, in my mind, I, I write this out, you know, and maybe you don't have to write it out on your exam because you already know it. You don't have to write the words out, but you better be drawing this two by two table and, and do the plus minus. Now, <clears throat> I focus on what they, the question asks. I need positive predictive value. So I need top left going to the right. I just need to fill these in. I'm going to put my N since I didn't give it to me. I'm like, well, wait a second. I, I, I can't figure this out without that. Because it's telling me 20% are known to be actively infected, and if I don't know how many, how am I going to figure out what the 20% is? We we make it up, okay? And you're either, you're just, and for you on this exam, these exams use a thousand, okay? It just works. I, if I used a hundred, what would happen? <clears throat> if I used a hundred, you know, again, if I did 20% of that, it'd be 20 here, 80 here, and I'm telling you, when you start doing 95% of something, you're going to get a decimal. But if you if you just have a standard protocol of using a thousand of your n as your n your, your number of people in the study, you'll stay away from decimals and everybody's life is so much easier. So let's just say it's n. So I need this. I need these two boxes and I can solve positive predictive value. Well, they told me sensitivity is. Let me see. And let's put some letters in here. <clears throat> they told me sensitivity, which is this one going down, so that's A plus C, is 95%, okay? Now, what do I do with this? Well, what else do I know? I know that 20% are known to be actively infected. So that's, in reality, in reality, 20% are actively infected. So if I said N is 1,000, what's 20% of 1,000? 200, right? If 20% are actively infected, that means this little plus sign, this column here, is 200 people. That means the negative over here that we're negative for it is gonna be 800, cool. So if I know sensitivity is 90% and it's A over A plus C, but look, A plus C equals what? 200, it equals 200. So now I'm just, I'm working backwards. <clears throat> what's 90, what's 95% 90 of 200? Well, I know 90% of 200 is gonna be 180, simple math, and 100% is 200, so it's gotta be in the middle. Uh, it's gotta be 190. So that 190 equals A, okay? Boom, I got my first guy right there, 190. Now I need this column. I need this guy, I need B. So I just go right to it. I know, well, it's gotta be something with specificity. So what's specificity? It's D over D plus uh, B. Well, I know that this column is how many people? 800. Specificity is what? 80%. So what's 80% of 800, well, that's 640. But now be careful, right? What does that 640 actually represent? Is that, is that what I'm looking for? No, that 640 is actually D, right? That's how they're going to trip you up. Now, because now I can say if this is 640 and the whole column's 800, then how much was this one right here? Well, I got to go, okay, 640 plus 160, okay, plus 100. And uh, 60 should should get me there. So with that being said, now I have these. Now I can find my positive predictive value. Positive is what? Top left going to the right. So it's 190 over 190 plus 160. And if I do that, you know, 190 plus 160, 0, 5, uh, <clears throat> 5 1. Let me make sure I get this right. 14, 5, 1, 350. Does that even sound right? Um, and if I did 190 over 350, I better get, yeah, da, 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 da. you know, I already had this kind of pre done, so I'm going to tell you it's going to be right around 54%. Okay? Now, where are they going to trip you up? One of the trip up things was if you, if you would have thought that that 640, that 640 would have went there, you know, if they're really sick, they would have, then you did 190 over uh, 190 plus 640, that's going to get you what? 23%, which is, of course, a distractor in that thing, right? 
So <clears throat> the correct answer, the only answer is gonna be 54%. But remember, you have to, you gotta know the basics, guys. This is a good, this is a good question because you, you had to know the, the basics of it. And then you apply the basics actually to this one right here, okay? Now, the other key to this problem was the fact that you had to, to put in an N. And remember, if I if you used 100, what would have happened? Um, all these would have been down a lot smaller. And then instead of doing these these numbers like this, you would have, you would have came in with decimal points and it would have just been a lot more confusing. You still would have got there, but a lot more confusing. Now, I know some of y'all's argument might be, well, man, you just took one problem and it took you 10 minutes to do. But I'm telling you, once you, if you were to actually get this on a test, you focus on, I would have immediately went, it, went to positive predictive value. I would have focused on these two boxes. I would have assigned an N of 1,000. And now I would have quickly done this. I would have got my 190. I would have went over here. And I would have quickly got my, uh, my 640 and then got my 160 and then solve, okay? It's about doing as many problems as you can. That's the purpose of this YouTube channel is to see as many problems. Uh, so when you get to the exam, you're like, you're not scared, you're not worried about anything. You're like, look, I've seen basically every scenario there is, and at least you're in the ballpark to solve it. And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Biostat should be something that we're gonna be, it's gonna be our strength, okay? It's a strength, not a weakness. So hope you like the video, guys.